So this is a little PowerPoint that uh, Bill Lozier, the pre uh, previous guy coordinator on this, put together a few years ago. So I'm kind of going to kind of uh, just run through things real quickly here. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. So civil engineering, uh, this is a branch of engineering that specializes in design and construction of structures uh, such as bridges, roads, and dams. And of course, like most other engineering work, we have to keep in mind the cost of the project and how it uh, affects other things like the environment, so the government regulations. So today we're going to talk about bridges. Bridge. They're the oldest type of bridge. 
this course, they deliberately direct the loads down to the piers and they bump them to the bridge. And um, they have a lot of strength with them. You can see where the, where the compression lies. They get the load on the top. And, and through that arch, all the all these, these stones act, act together and compress together. So a lot of the compression is a friction fit. I'm going to show you a local one that we've got here, but we'll show a couple of examples. This is a uh, arch bridge we've got on Cherry Valley Road. And it is, um, we don't really know how old it is, but it's a stone arch bridge. It's stone, and each there's three arches underneath there. And each of those arches are made out of big sandstone probably about uh, three to four feet long by about one and a half to two and a half two feet wide. And we think the bridge was probably built back in the 1840s, something like that. So amazing, it's still standing today and with all the traffic that's on it. We're in the process of uh, uh, not, not actually replacing the bridge, but probably building a new bridge on a different alignment and leave this one in and as a historical structure more or less. So it'll be four or five years till we get to that one though. Uh, beam bridges are the simplest to build and they carry the loads vertically down through the piers and the abutments. This is what I was talking about, compression and tension. When you put the weight on the top of the bridge, the top of the, the beam is in compression, the bottom of the rate beam is in tension. Oh, there's a little website there that you can click on if you want, and it uh, talks about some of the uh, uh, some examples of some of the beam bridges. Truss bridges. We've got a few truss bridges around. We've got a couple in the city of Newark. East Main Street Bridge right over, over here is a truss bridge. Hey. It's made, but combination of triangles basically and the loads um, go from the framework down to the pier via these triangles. And so depending on which which part of the triangle, one part of the triangle is in compression, one part of it's in tension. So uh, it needs to be made out of a material that can handle both the tension and compression. Concrete, for example, if you made the beams out of concrete, um, Concrete is very good in compression, but in tension, it's very weak. You can pull it apart. But when it's in compression, it's very strong. Uh, let's go on to the next one. Where this talks a little bit about the, uh, uh, what a typical truss bridge looks like. It usually has the abutments on the other ends uh, with a the roadway and the truss actually supports the roadway at that point. Oh yeah, there's bills. Bills. Go ahead. Thanks. There's our, our famous local, one of the other famous local trusses. That's out the Seven Hills Road out in the county. It doesn't look like it's in really good shape underneath there, but that was bad suspension. So suspension bridges, uh, they suspend the roadway via Cables that are on it. I'm trying to do it real quick for you to pay attention here. And uh, for instance, this is uh, an example of a suspension bridge, it's a Golden Gate Bridge out in California. Here's a picture of another suspension bridge. The tall pier, the tall piers. Similar to that suspension bridge in that 
beers support the center and the cables come off of those beers and support the roadway network. Power says that power supports the bridge deck directly and the power is directly loaded vertically out to the ground. So the tower itself is in compression. The, the cables are in tension. So the cables are all designed for uh, the tension that, that it takes to hold up that roadway portion. Learning from failure. Uh, a lot of, of engineering over time has, has developed uh, some of the early bridges had issues Fail. These, are, these are some of the, the top four famous failures that have happened on bridges most in the last century. The uh, Tacoma Narrows Bridge in Washington. Uh, let's go take a look at that one here. Thanks. It's a suspension bridge and it failed you know, because of the wind load that we were talking about. Watch this. We won't take the time or not, but it's a uh, there's a YouTube video. It's called Galloping Dirty. Is what this bridge has always been called. And basically, the the wind uh, they didn't take account the wind that blows through the sound, and the deck started started flexing in high winds. And as it started flexing, it got worse and worse and worse, and actually worked itself apart. And there's a pretty good video. So the engineers of the world decided that uh, lateral bracing to keep that wind load from twisting that bridge up uh, was, was one of the developments that came out of that. Silver Bridge down in southern Ohio um, back in 1967 it failed. And uh, it's a bridge that has, uh, you can see it's a truss, but the trusses are held together connected together uh, with eye bars and the eye bars are like a steel beam with a hole in it with a steel pin through it connected to another steel beam and once those pins are in there you really don't know what's going on in there and the pins shear and when the pin shear the beam drops out of place bit the bridge collapses then. So that was uh, the result in, uh, back in 1967. And actually, right after that, the federal government required us to, uh, everybody that has public bridges, to start doing bridge inspections. Um, I would have, uh, I would have uh, saved that bridge if it had been inspected and somebody had seen what was going wrong with it. So, we do the radial bridge inspections now, and also we build bridges with redundancy. Basically, you don't put all your eggs in one basket and have one pin supporting the whole side of the bridge. Now you've got either uh, several pins or you've got some sort of redundancy so that if one component fails, it's not going to take the whole bridge down. Uh, that's Mohari Creek. Uh, uh, it was a beach type bridge, but the uh, failure was scoured down in the creek. Uh, because nobody was inspecting it, there was a pier down in the creek. And, uh, yeah, there it goes. The pier in the creek was undermined with the water, so the foundation was undermined. The pier started dropping, and as it lost the support, the support of the deck was gone also. So it's important to have a really good foundation underneath them. Again, if this would have, would have been inspected, one of the inspection items is to, is to check for scouring. If you're in water that's over four feet deep, you should be taking a probe down or doing underwater diving to find out if there's any issues down below.
legacy that we, we design in them today. There's a quiz that uh, uh, Bill had used before. If you're interested in that, you can, you know, we can give you the PowerPoint and you can pop that up. I'm going to skip over that now. But there's just some pictures of some other bridges. There's the uh, bridge over in Corpus. I think that's on the uh, bridge. Yeah, that power Some of the bridges were not built um, according to the, the, the sizes that we give in there, the minimum sizes and so forth. So, for instance, um, the bridge must have a minimum clear span of 12 inches in length. I think they had some bridges last year that were 8 inches, 6 inches. Hard to compare the two, you know. Um, the deck must be, the interior of the deck must be 1.5 inches wide, uh, and that's a lot, that's to allow the loading block that's shown in the, uh, in the pictures there to, to mount to it. Have you guys seen that <coughs> the picture of the, uh, the weight mechanism that they use to test them? I can email this to you, but basically it's got the 12 inches here, or, or I'm sorry, um, yes, no, it doesn't 12 have 12 inches. inches. That's more than, well, I don't know what the, maybe it is 12 inches. Is it 12 inches? I don't know. Yeah, that should be the span, because then the piers and the abutments yep. would go yep. Yep. there. This has got a hole in it, and there's a cable that comes up from, from this pulley here. 
this cable comes down, goes around the pulley, and wraps around the uh, this cylinder here, which has a uh, strain gauge in it. And as you crank the, as you turn the crank, it puts tension on the cable. 